Good evening. Welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting of the Waterville City Council. If anybody would like an agenda, I believe they are located right outside the door. And before we get started, I will ask uh, Sydney Mayhew to please stand and lead us in a pledge. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, All right, uh, first up I have a proclamation uh, that I will read uh, for Waterville School Choice Week. So, whereas all children in Waterville should have access to the highest quality education possible, and whereas Waterville recognizes the important role that an effective education plays in preparing all students in Waterville to be successful adults, and whereas quality education is critically important to the economic vitality of Waterville, and whereas Waterville is home to a variety of high quality public and non-public schools from which parents can choose for their children in addition to families who choose to educate their children in the home. <coughs> and whereas educational variety not only helps diversify our economy but also enhances the vibrancy of our community. And whereas Waterville has many high quality teaching professionals in all types of school settings educating our children, uh, whereas School Choice Week is celebrated across the country by millions of students, parents, educators, schools, and organizations to raise awareness for the need for effective educational options. Now, therefore, I, Nicholas Isgro, Mayor of Waterville, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby recognize January 20th to the 26th, 2019, as Waterville School Choice Week. And I call this observance the attention of all of our <coughs> citizens. Thank you. And uh, before we go any farther, we will have the disclosure of conflict of interest. Is there any counselor who feels they have a conflict of interest with the votes they'll take tonight? I have a conflict of interest in the Ward 2 City Councilor. So that would be noted for resolution 29-2019 um, that you will abstain. Yes. Uh, anybody else? Okay, uh, next up is the approval of the consent agenda. Could I get a motion for the approval of the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Unfinished business ordinance 20, 2019. Move to read by title only. And second. All in favor? An ordinance providing for amendment to zoning. Move to adopt. And second. Is there any discussion? And for those in the audience, if you don't have a summary, uh, this is for the Children's Discovery Museum uh, rezoning Seven Eustace Parkway to allow the museum to relocate from Augusta to that church property. No discussion, I'll get for a roll call. Councilor Morris? Yes. Councilor Smith? Yes. Councilor Mayu? Yes. Councilor Coelho? Yes. Councilor Tate? Yes. Councilor Thomas? Yes. Vote is six in favor and zero opposed. And next is Ordinance 21-2019. Move to read by title only. Second. All in favor. An ordinance providing for extension of the marijuana moratorium. Move to adopt. Second. Is there any discussion? Could I get a roll call, please? Councilor Morris? Yes. Councilor Smith? Yes. Councilor Mayu? Yes. Councilor Coelho? Yes. Councilor Tate? Yes. Councilor Thomas? Yes. The vote is six in favor and zero opposed. Moving on to new business, <coughs> resolution 23 2019. A resolution providing for appointments to the Solid Waste Committee. Be it resolved by the City Council acting as municipal officers that the following City Councilors be appointed to the existing Solid Waste Committee Eric Thomas, J. Coelho. Be it further resolved that said committee meet soon to review the city's current solid waste and recycling programs and to discuss any ideas for changes, improvements, etc. Move to adopt. And second. Any discussion? All in favor? Um, oh, you have a discussion piece? Okay. Just a piece on this. We put this on the agenda because it's been a while since the solid waste committee has convened. Um, and what we're, what the purpose of is reconvening the Solid Waste <coughs> Committee with some new additions 
is to generate some uh, topics of discussion and review, um, particularly pertaining to trash collection, recycling, um, reviewing costs, analysis, um, and just looking at it as a whole, solid waste is one of the highest costs to this municipality, and I thought it would be verifiable to go ahead and uh, convene this and look, as, and look to see if we can possibly find any kind of savings, any kind of feasib feasibility, uh, you know, studies that we can do as far as an analysis is concerned so that we can get a better cap on what we are looking at as far as solid waste going forward. So that is the purpose of uh, having this committee uh, revigorated here. Okay. All in favor? Great. Next is order 24, 2019. An order providing for a sale of vacant lot 38 Cary Lane. Be it hereby ordered by the Waterville City Council acting as municipal officer <coughs> officers that a vacant lot located at 38 Cary Lane be sold to Gary Murphy in the amount of blank. You want to postpone this, right? Mark? Yes, please, if you could postpone to the next meeting date, February 5th. <laughs> Move to postpone until the next meeting, or meet what meeting date? <coughs> Next meeting, which the I next believe meeting. is the fifth. The next regularly scheduled city council. That's second. Okay, all in favor? Thank you. Great, thank you. <clears throat> next, ordinance 25, 2019. An ordinance providing for amendment to public safety ordinance, be it enacted by the city council of the city of Waterville, acting as municipal officers as follows. That amendments be made to the public safety ordinance, article three, section three. To adopt. And second. Is there discussion? I'm here. Both Great. Questions. Um, until now, we didn't have a public use. Um, you'll also see the resolution, which is next, um, a public use permit policy. Over the last few years, we've been, I think, inundated is the best word um, for how many people are requesting the use of our public property. We've got some great amenities. Um, the Riverwalk is really the, the newest one that prompted a, an official po uh, policy to formalize kind of what people need to do in order to, to use our space. So not a lot of changes in the actual ordinance. Um, the, the original ordinance, if you'd looked at it, it was based on numbers. So I got together with Chief Massey and, um, and Mike and we just, uh, everything is in keeping with the new policy. I, I hope you had a chance to look at it. It's very thorough. We met with folks from Portland, Bangor, Bath, and Lewiston. Some of their policies are upwards of 20 pages. I think ours is six, so we trimmed it down. It's, I think it's just what we need. Yeah. Okay. In a moment, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Matt, I don't see, what happens if somebody doesn't get a permit? then they're not, they're not allowed the use of the property. I know, but what if they do anyway? Because I don't see anything in here, like in terms of Like what's their, what, what do we do if they? <clears throat> I guess that would be, it would be a police matter. Yeah, yeah. Well, it may be covered in another section of the ordinance, I don't. enforcement. Oh, it could be, it could be in another, yeah. It, another it section, because be. the proposal yeah. for you tonight is just on section three of our current <clears throat> ordinance, and that's, Ordinance has, I said section, article three, has a number of different articles. Mm -hmm. So it may have an enforcement one. It could if someone wanted to look it up. Yeah, that's a good question, Councillor. I'm not sure. <coughs> yeah, Matt, I thought the overall um, <coughs> conception of this and, and uh, obviously to go along with what our existing <laughs> one was, it's very well formulated. Like you said, uh, looking at comparing it to the municipalities, uh, keeping it. Uh, to six pages versus, like you said, multiple dozens of pages is a, was, must have been a challenge. Yeah. Well, we um, trimmed it down, yeah. And really, you know, the, the, the goal is to protect our use of the area. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So it, I, I think it's a, a job well done on all this. Thank you. Is there any other question or comment from the council? Uh, we do have a, yeah, questions from the public. I just ask that you come to the podium and just state your name for the record and, and your question or comment. My name is Dan Libby, Ward 4. I was hoping he could identify himself and tell us who he is and why we're relying on his council. He didn't do that when he came up here. Thank you. Oh. My name is Matt Skane. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director in Waterville. Thank you, Matt. Right. You're welcome. 
Um, is there any other questions or comments? All right, we'll take a vote. All in favor? Next resolution 26, 2019. A resolution providing for adoption of public use permit policy. Be it resolved by the Waterville City Council acting as municipal officers that the city adopt a new public use permit policy and approve revisions to its application and contract form that now includes a fee schedule. Move to adopt. And second. Is there any discussion or questions from the council? Michael? I wanted to make a, a mention that even though we already had a lot of this covered in the ordinance, which you just acted on, this policy is entirely new. We didn't have a policy that covered it pretty much, right? No, the po well, the, right, the policy is entirely new. The yeah, policy yeah. is entirely new. Right. <clears throat> and the other thing that we really didn't have much on was a clear fee schedule for use of city parks and properties. and. I don't have any doubt that this is something that's gonna have to evolve over time. Mm -hmm. We may find some pieces of this policy that don't work so well. Some fees may be out of whack, either too high or too low. Uh, so this is a first stab, at least trying to contain, as Matt said, the use that's really escalated for Quarry Road, Riverwalk, and with Castongue Square being rehabbed, uh, redesigned at some point in the not too distant future, there'll be demand for that space too. So we're trying to get ahead of that. Mm -hmm. Great. Positive first step all the way. Councilor Thomas. Matt, is there a reason it says application for permit shall be per submitted to Parks and Recreation no more than 90 days in advance? What if somebody was trying to plan an event more than 90 days? Well, we just don't want to get into a situation like we have before when folks are booking things a year out each, each and every year. You know, we're, we're trying to get away from that. Um, 90 days seems pretty reasonable. It's, it's easy enough for po folks to get a hold of our office <coughs> and, and to let us know to put a bug in our ear so we can kind of save dates on the calendar, but we can't lock them in until 90 days before. We don't um, want to do that. The reason I ask, um, I mean, the events that I'm associated with, with the Opera House, the Waterfall Rock, those were already picking dates for Right. Um, and then, you know, say, you know, for those who don't know, I'm a concert promoter, so say I wanted to put a concert on at Edo Falls, if I'm planning something on that scale, I'm planning it way more than 90 days in advance. Yeah. Well, you know, it depends on what the event is, Councillor. If there if there are big events, you know, there's a group of us. It's not just myself, and it's not just Mike who makes the the decisions on these. We have a listserv, city department heads that we look at these things. So, I mean, exceptions can be made. Like Mike said, this is the first. You know, this is our first stab at the policy. I think it's solid. But those are, those are things that we'll consider. Yeah. You know, if they're if they're more than 90 days out. Why That's do we not have a rate for the amphitheater? Well, I, it, it, there's something in there to the effect of they'll need to get a hold of our, our office. And really, Councillor, um, it depends on how big the event is down there. The amphitheater is one in the gazebo, too. I, I want to be, I think we should be very protective of both of those. Uh, you know, you can just imagine that everybody is going to want to have their wedding at the gazebo or the amphitheater. Um, I, I think you'll also see the note in there that we're only going to allow one per weekend at either. The amphitheater is just such a big space and we were thinking a lot about <coughs> concerts so we don't want to to book out um, uh, something that's really small down there if there's something bigger that's coming in that the whole community can can take advantage of all right thank you yeah. any other questions or comments real quick while I'm here I just uh, have your uh, parks and recreation starter packs <laughs> Listing of our facilities and programs, um, and the, the new map and trail at Thank Corey you. Road. <coughs> and I was encouraged to hear just before the meeting began that Councillors Morris and Smith are interested in joining the, the Recreation Committee, which is important, and we'll begin meeting probably within a month or two. So that's great. Thank you. We're also looking for a member of the City Council to, um, to sit on the Friends of Quarry Road Board as an ex officio. Um, Councilor Lessing was our last and we're looking for someone new. Um, and if, you're, if you have questions about what that's like, um, you're welcome to ask me or just join us at one of our meetings. Um, and we could really use someone from the Council on the Friends of Quarry Road Board too. So, Great. thank you. 
All right, I'm gonna call for a vote. All in favor? Moving to order 27, 2018. Move to read by title only. And second. All in favor? An order providing for approval of forfeiture. Move to adopt. <coughs> second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Order 28, 2019. An order providing for acceptance of a 2018 federal build grant. Be hereby ordered by the Waterville City Council <coughs> acting as municipal <coughs> officers that the city accepts the $7,371,200 federal award from the United States Department of Transportation's Better Utilizing Investment to Leverage Development Build Program to implement the city's Waterville Downtown Transit Corridors, Gateways, and Revitalization Project. Be it further ordered that the city manager be authorized to complete all required paperwork necessary to complete the grant award. Move to adopt. Second. I'd like to say a few words on this, um, only because I've been involved going back four years to when we first started this process. Um, for many of you, uh, many of you probably will remember, some of you may not have, not, not have been aware or, or recall from the time, but starting four years ago, we started a, a lengthy public process to talk about how we could revitalize the downtown. And the major partners were, of course, Colby College, the Chamber, the Growth Council, many business owners um, and city representatives as well. As we move forward um, over the following two years, we had a series of meetings that talked about how the city could take part and, and obviously we've had all this private development, but what could the city do in order to leverage all of this investment? And a lot of the things we talked about were things like two-way traffic, a lot of safety features, sidewalks, um, really how we could make the downtown a place that was much more vibrant and welcoming to all. And out of that came uh, a plan that was supported by, uh, I think, some of the crowds. We had over 100 people in city council chambers in some of those meetings where some of these preliminary plans were presented. And uh, w as much as we wanted to move forward and the community wanted to move forward at the time, we weren't able to because we just didn't have the funds. Um, fortunately, this past year, uh, we were able to apply for this federal build grant and we were able to do so uh, not only because we had a, a, a great big team of folks at Kobe College and at the Central Maine Growth Council working hours and hours and hours trying to put together this grant, working with Senator Susan Collins' office to stress the importance of uh, how this could impact our revitalization but also because of a lot of uh, capital that was put on the table by partners like Colby College as well. And what this resulted in was the Senator Susan Collins working very hard uh, at the federal level to bring back a lot of those dollars that we're constantly sending down. We don't always get these dollars back. Um, and it looks like we might be able to finally realize this plan that we wanted to achieve those couple of years ago. And I would encourage this council greatly to, to please accept these funds and move forward. I know there's still a, a whole lot of work ahead of us. Um, you'd be amazed at how much. Uh, so there, this isn't the end, but I would say this would be the, the beginning of a new phase where we can finally get some of these things done. So I would encourage you to please accept the funds. Councilor. I definitely want to second and reiterate what uh, the mayor said. I was also involved four years ago with the mayor in these public discussions and sessions that we had highly commend all of the players uh, and participation, uh, including residents and businesses and, uh, you know, that were involved in this process. This federal build grant is truly a blessing to the city of Waterville. This is something that municipalities dream about, town managers dream about, city councils and selectmen dream about. Um, this is absolutely um, the a beginning of a new era possibly for the city of Waterville that could really transform our downtown, our infrastructure into something that is going to be exciting, mm. modern, viable, 
uh, from an economic revitalization standpoint, all of the things that we have already done and all are in play. Uh, this is just uh, more of the cake batter that is being formed, hopefully with the icing to come soon with this all coming together. And uh, this is really something that the city council and all Waterville residents can really get behind and be excited about because ultimately, sustainability of businesses uh, and uh, keeping our uh, tax base low and keeping uh, you know what we have as far as assets for our city uh, and revenue uh, is something that we are craving for. We're hoping that this will encourage that, increase that, and multiply that. So ultimately, we can see our tax rate stabilize and even go down. Uh, we can have better accessibility to the businesses and the downtown. Um, and I think the process that we have undertaken as a council and as a whole, as a city, has been admirable. And I, you know, I encourage also the council to go ahead and pass this. I just want to add, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't add this. I forgot to mention the State Department of Transportation as one of our partners, and they have been incredible over all of the years we've been talking about this. And um, that is also a big deal, and, and I, I apologize for not mentioning that on the front end, but uh, it's very important to mention their partnership here as well. And actually, at this point, we're bringing in some water and sewer uh, as partners as well. Councilor. Mike, how locked in are we to specifics at this point? If we accept this money, like, how much are we locked into a specific plan for what will be done in the conversion <coughs> to two-way traffic? Well, let me answer that by saying that I think all of 2019 is going to be devoted to design, planning, engineering work. So we're not going to be rushing into anything very quickly. And I really doubt if there'll be any, if much construction even in 2020. What we may see in 2020 is the water district finally getting at the water lines, which are right out here in the street beside us, because those lines are over 100 years old. So that kind of construction may happen. But I think the, the plan is open for comments and questions. Obviously, we want to do everything we can. One of the key elements to this project is rerouting the US 201 South traffic off Main Street. Those folks that are coming from the north on 201, coming down Main Street and using our downtown just to get from one place to another, hopefully routing that traffic away from the downtown is a huge piece of it. So there are some things that are somewhat set, like that, but then there are other pieces that I think are going to have to be massaged. <clears throat> How do we provide for loading and unloading? What about the parking stalls on Main Street? Which ones have to be changed? Which ones can stay? I wanted to mention also that what you see on the screen is uh, found at the city's uh, website. There's a separate page for the Main Street Bill Grant, and uh, that tries to give you a quick intro into what this is all about. As the mayor said, and uh, Councillor Mayu said, it's certainly the biggest thing that downtown has seen since urban renewal 50 years ago. It has the potential to be the biggest thing, and I think it will be. And so that gives you a, a starter course on the project. There are some extra paper copies up front here on the table. Um, so there will be plenty of opportunity for public meetings throughout the course of the project, uh, especially in this coming year, 2019. Is the council ready for me to invite public commentary? <laughs> um, Kim, uh, oh, just, go ahead. just to be clear, though, like, what if, to piggyback off what Eric said, does the acceptance of this require two-way traffic? Is that a is that a yes or no? Like, does does the end plan? Like, if we get into this and we start having these public <coughs> discussions and we come up with another alternative, there's another alternative that goes away from two-way traffic. Is that contingent upon accepting? If we accept these funds, are we locking into two-way traffic, and then we figure out what? type of trees to put in around that, or mm -hmm. if we, there's another suggestion. I think the most important thing is the rerouting of traffic. Mm -hmm. So if there's another way to do it, other than two-way, that idea certainly sh could and should be talked about. But I think 
sticking with the rerouting of traffic is the, one of the key, if we accept this money, I think that you is You are gonna have to reroute second. from the 201. Um, and that's why I just wanna remind, I, I tried to remind people that a couple of years ago, we had a, we had a series of public meetings and there was, and, and um, I see people in the audience now that attended those meetings. Um, so th th this wasn't an overnight decision that we came to this, this is something that we asked the community for input on, the community gave us the input before we went out uh, to try to secure these funds. So, uh, Kim Linloth. Good evening, my name is Kim Linloth. I'm with the Mid-Maine Chamber of Commerce for a long, long time. Um, and I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of the acceptance of the bill grant. For those of you who aren't super familiar with how the uh, mid main Chamber goes, um, this came before our public policy committee. Um, we looked at the facts, we looked um, at what we would be getting for the investment, and the committee was unanimous in its decision to recommend an <coughs> approval of this to our executive board. The executive board voted um, unanimously to approve it, and then subsequently it went to the full board and every vote there was um, in support of this. So what we have said is the mid main Chamber of Commerce supports the city of Waterville accepting $7,371,200 in federal funding from the U.S. Department of Transportation Better Ut Utilizing Investment to Leverage Development Build Program to implement the $9,214,000 Waterville Downtown Transit Corridor Gateways and Revitalization Project, which will spur improvements for roadways, sidewalks, intersections, and public green spaces in downtown Waterville. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And Libby Ward Ford again. Uh, my, my question is, how protected are these funds? And, and what I mean by that is, are we going to be buying water slides with this, or are we uh, going to manipulate like TIF funds? I just want to make sure that this, these funds are protected for the use of what we're looking at here. That, that is a good question, and I appreciate it. Um, because these are federal dollars, um, and we are working with the federal government, this is very protected. Um, Mike, I mean, you can probably speak to a little bit more, but. Well, one, I think one answer to your question is up. what's up on the screen. Those on the right side are the categories of eligible expenses. So mm -hmm. track of improvement is going to be the intersections, the whole one-way, two-way thing. Uh, Costongway Square is going to be redesigned, so that's going to have <laughs> things in it that not directly related to streets. Um, and streetscape, sidewalks, uh, some trees, benches, things like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, when I see when I when I see etc. That's when I see that on certain things that I mean, when you when you scroll through here, there are a couple that said etc. That that's what concerned me. So, right. thank you very much. I appreciate. It. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Dan Bernier. I'm a resident of Ward One. It, the current configuration of downtown began in the early 1960s, actually, when my father was mayor of Waterville and started urban renewal. At that point, downtown was redesigned for the economy of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. We're not in the 60s anymore. It's time to redesign our downtown for the co economy of today. Great. And I strongly support and encourage the City Council to um, take these funds and, and begin the process. I mean, I've looked over a lot of the materials on this. From what I see, you have a great deal of flexibility still in what you're going to do. I, I do think you're kind of committed to two-way traffic on Main Street as, as I look through the materials. But outside of that, you're going to have a lot of flexibility otherwise in terms of how you configure parking. There's plenty of answers for parking, too, around here. Uh, and so I would just strongly encourage you to do this. Also, as I go, I mean, I spend a lot of time in Augusta at the State House with my job and everything. I have my offices right here on Main Street. People stop you and say, a lot, go lot going on in your town. You know, and these are people from Portland, Augusta, Bangor. The optic of us getting this grant over all the, Garvin can tell you the eight, nine hundred communities that we got this over is huge. And probably in the last 30 years, the biggest thing this community suffered from is pessimism. And it's things like this really are going to help to build a more optimistic community. So I would strongly encourage the city council to take these funds. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. This is the first of two votes. Yes, so this will be on the agenda again for our next meeting. Correct. And if you have any questions, um, I would encourage you to, to reach out to Mike, reach out to your city councilor in the meantime, because um, you have a couple of weeks to, to try to get those answered as well, so we can be as best prepared as possible before the next meeting. Next is resolution 29, 2019. Appointment of a City Councilor Ward 2, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Waterville acting as municipal officers as follows, that blank be appointed to fill the vacancy in Ward 2 Council seat until the next regularly scheduled municipal election. Move to adopt. And second. <laughs> uh, Patty, when is the next regularly scheduled municipal uh, November? November, okay. correct. Um, okay, what I would like to do, um, I'm trying to remember the format here, if you could maybe help me out a little bit because these aren't frequent things. Um, typically we allow, like to have the candidates come up and take a few minutes just to tell us, tell the council about yourselves and, and what you, why you're interested in serving on the council. Um, and at that time there will be ballots presented to the, the councilors mm -hmm. and Patty will read them and that'll be it. Um, okay. Right. Alphabetical. Order. Alphabetical. Yep. Looks like first I have Mr. Keith Beal. Keith Beal from 21 Ash Street, Ward 2. Uh, I've been a resident here off and on since 86, and I understand the city's become more and more vital in that period of time. And for that reason, I'd like to be on board to uh, have some input as to how the progress goes from now into the future. Understanding we're just stewards at this time for the city, and I'm looking for a long-term growth for the city. Are there any questions? Any questions from the council? Okay. How do you feel you'll add to the makeup of our council already? I don't know the background of you members, but I have a technical background, and uh, <coughs> I'm a student of history, and uh, I understand the political process. And uh, I don't know, I just, <laughs> I've been to college and have a well-rounded education and also uh, experience as a workman. So I have the perspective <coughs> of both sides of, of the citizens in the, st in the town. And I know many people from ex-mayors to homeless people while living here. So I think I have a pretty good pulse on how people feel or would feel on particular subjects. Um, do you have any specific experience with community organizations such as the Chamber of Commerce or any other, uh, the Alphon Youth Center, any other nonprofits in town? No, I do um, not. Anything in your professional no. background that no, would? No, this is the first meeting I've been to. I do not have any of that type of experience. Any others? Thank you, Mr. Beal. Thank, Thank you. you, ladies and gentlemen. Next, I'd like to call it Mr. Phil Bofia. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Phil Bofia. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a Ward 2 resident, a father of one. I'm currently employed at CJ as a business analyst, graduated from the University of Maine in 2009 with a Bachelor of Science. Participated in collegial athletics as a member of the University of Maine basketball team, and I've now been a resident of this great state for close to 15 years. My daughter Alyssa and I have resided in the city of Waterville for close to a decade. I'm someone who is very passionate about my community, community in which I'm a very active member. I'm the chair of KV Connect, the young professional organization in town. Over the last two years, through our efforts, we have donated over $3,000 a countless volunteer hours to our local nonprofit. Within the Realize Maine platform, 
We are very active players in the vast state effort to retain our young talents in our cities and state. I am a committee member with the Mid-Main Chamber of Commerce, supporting our local chamber through volunteer engagements. It is because of those engagements and the leadership capacity displayed that I was blessed to receive the Rising Star Award from the Mid-Main Chamber of Commerce just last year. I am a member of the City of Waterville Airport Advisory Committee, a former Rotarian, hold the trustee seat with, a, with KVCC. And finally, I'm the president of Waterville uh, Area Habitat for Humanity. Through Habitat, we have helped and continue to help hundreds of families through our various programs. And with the help of many volunteers and partners, we have recently finished the build of our last house. We, that house now belongs to Maggie and her two children once again showing the kind of power that a community holds when they come together as one to provide a hand up to our needed families. We are currently working towards our next build and I would be remiss if I did not mention that we do love our new and returning volunteers. So if you are looking to get involved, please, Habitat and any of our great nonprofit will welcome you with open hands. I am passionate about my community and serving the great people in it. I enjoy working with people of all walks of life, as diverse as they come, because we are a diverse community. The reason I'm here today asking for your vote, counselors, is to continue to do the work that I'm already doing for the people in this city. I'm ready to take on the seat for War II and continue to give back to a community that has given so much to me. I love a challenge and I know I can help this city continue to rise. What will I bring to city council? A proven community servant, a youthful and driven leader, a unifier and team player. Most of all, a person of integrity who is fair, does not take sides, he is unbiased about, about his decisions. Someone who will always put the needs of the people and the city first. Someone currently in the arena with rolled up sleeves, fighting for the needs of the people in this community. Someone who lives in this city, works in this city. A familiar face who isn't just here today because he read about this position in the paper, or he thinks something that is something that would be cool to do, but someone who is here today because this is what he does, public service. And most importantly, someone who works well with others. <laughs> can disagree with them, but would always work to do it in a respectful way in order to maintain mutual respect and help things move forward. That is what I will bring to this city council. It is a privilege to be considered for an opportunity to serve the people of War II and of this city. And I pledge that should I be given the opportunity, I will do just that, continue to serve. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Wow. Uh, questions from the council? Phil, no doubt that you've done a lot around the city. Um, over the past few years, the city has dealt with budgetary issues, gone back and forth. How do you feel that you'd be able to help us when it comes to that budget time? When it comes to budget time, I think that one of the things um, that I can bring to the table, like I said, is uh, one unbiased opinion. Make sure that you know when we make decisions, we make decisions based on facts, um, and we we get everybody involved. We make sure that we get we have an open discussion about the issue that we face that we are facing, and we get everybody on the table to bring their input so that we can all work together to uh, make sure that we resolve our problems. And Phil, I'd like to commend you on your rising star award. Thank you. Enough accreditation to that or can be said enough of. And like I said, I think you are, I know you as a person, and big bold letters, the word involved is, Thank you. is your mantra. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome Brad Hollowell. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Brad Hollowell. I'm a resident at 10 Oakdale Street in Waterville. 
Uh, I would like to be part of the city council uh, because I was born here and raised here. I graduated from Waterville High School in uh, 1999. And uh, my whole family lives here. And Waterville has always been a city that has been a fantastic place to live. Uh, I had moved away at one point thinking I wanted to explore the country and always found myself back here because of family and friends and the relationships that I had built uh, here in Waterville. And I absolutely love where I live and want to be of service to it. Um, I also think that it's very important to uh, have members on the city council who can keep an open mind and work across party lines and not simply vote with their party, but be willing to work with those that they disagree with in a respectful and open and honest manner. And I think I can bring that to the city council. Um, I'm a, I have a bachelor's of science as well from the University of New England and uh, currently work in the telecommunications industry. So I think I bring a lot of technical skill and ability as well. I was also a former employee of Colby College and have had a lot of experience in working with them and for them and think that those relationships between uh, them and the city of Waterville are extremely important to continue to foster and improve upon. Great, thank you. Questions? You're getting off easy. I did, I got off easy, I like it. Thank you, Brad. Thanks. Winona Carnes. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Winona Carnes. I live at 79 North Street. I have been a Ward 2 resident for 16 very long years. Um, I've been in Waterville 19 years. I've raised all of my children here, all four of them. Well, I have two that are almost out of the nest. Um, so I've worked here, I've lived here, I've raised my children here, we've done Girl Scouts, we've been a part of the school system. Um, I've owned a home here. It, I understand what it's like to be a, a mom um, with a family when you have to budget for your taxes or your groceries and the, the delicate balance that that takes, the time management that it takes to have children and, and work. Um, I work for the Department of Human Services. Um, so policy is, is my entire job. If you've worked for the state, you understand policy is everything. It drives everything that you do, every, every choice that you make. There's a policy that you can fall back on. Um, and that's, that's <coughs> what I, I hope to bring is understanding policy, understanding a typical family in Waterville. You know, having lived here, worked here, gone to school, at KVCC and um, University of Maine, we've been a part of this community a very long time. And I'd like to think that I'm a pretty typical parent um, living in this area and understanding all of those challenges of being here. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, John Robertson. Thank you, I'm John Robertson, 21 Colonial Street. Um, I'm interested in serving on the council um, to continue the things that are going on in the city right now. I've grown up here, I've lived here since, since I was a child, um, and I think that the things that are going on now in the city um, are huge. It's, it's something that's been needed for a long, long time. And uh, the momentum that's going, I'd like to keep that going. Um, I come from 20 plus years in the municipal service, firefighter, paramedic, um, and I've worked as a police officer. I've worked on the employee side of the municipalities um, for quite some time. I've seen the ups and downs and in, in, uh, as the economy changes um, and I think I bring to the council, or would bring to the council, that um, that flexibility, <coughs> the understanding of what it's like to, to serve the community, see them on the street, see them in the stores, um, and 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 what the employees see um, of the city themselves. You know what they get for compensation and benefits, and how that affects the budget. Um, 
I am fiscally um, conservative. Um, that's kind of my um, my thoughts on on budgetary items. Um, outside of uh, work, I'm the president of Central Maine Youth Hockey. I serve on the board. Um, I have for quite a few years. Uh, I also serve with Maine Amateur Hockey Association. There's a lot of hockey there. Um, it's uh, you know it's challenging. I love to see the kids all um, at the rink, and uh, that's what I did. I served in the Marine Corps after high school. Graduated in 1992 from Waterville. Uh, went to KVCC. Got my paramedic uh, certificate, and that's what I did. Questions? Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, boy, I just want to say um, I have never seen this many applicants for a seat, and I think the city would be uh, really blessed to have every single one of you. I, I don't know how this council is going to make a choice, but man, thank you all for, for putting your names in. This, this is pretty impressive tonight. Um, all right, hand out the ballots. Is there anyone? Oh, oh that's right. Uh, is, we'll give a few. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, is there anybody in the audience who would like to come up and speak on behalf of any of the candidates? Anthony George. I'm in Ward 6. I don't live in Ward 2. Um, I have two college degrees. I have a associates in laboratory science and a bachelor's in biology. I'm the lead microbiologist at the ACH in Augusta. I asked to stay to work at Thayer, but they said, no, I have to go to Augusta. I wanted to stay in Waterville. Um, what else? Oh, uh, all the candidates are all great. I just want to remind you guys, uh, is, it, is it Phil, the guy? Is it Phil? He's the only one that I've seen. I've been coming to these meetings for like a year, and he's the only one I've seen here repeatedly. So that shows you he really con concerns what's going on inside the city. So I hope you vote for him. And also, too, I'm a member of the Cannabis uh, Committee or Marijuana Committee, whatever, Pot Committee, whatever they call it now. Thanks. So, so I hope you guys vote for Phil. Thank, Thank you. you. Counts? Um, I just want to say I've been through one or two of these when I was on the council before, and I know it's, it's tough sometimes to, I mean, some four out of the five candidates I really am encountering for the first time this evening. Um, and I feel a little on the spot to make a decision tonight. Um, and frankly, it won't make a difference whether we vote right now or if we vote at the very beginning of the next meeting. Um, and I personally wouldn't mind having a, a couple more weeks to maybe gather some more information, perhaps get a chance to chat personally with a couple more of the candidates. I mean, it is an important decision. This person's going to be serving through a budget session. So I how the other councils are feeling. If everyone else wants to vote tonight, I can vote, but I wouldn't mind having a couple more weeks to do some due diligence. Uh, no, this is not open. Um, I th this is, I'm kind of trying to stay out of this. This is a decision of the council. And uh, so I will, I will leave this discussion to the council on what to do for that. Do you want to make a motion to put that on the floor for discussion, yeah. Eric? Yeah, Eric, you want to make a motion to postpone to the next meeting? Yes, we'll see if anybody seconds it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would make a motion to postpone until the next city council meeting in order to, to give the councilors an opportunity to gather more information. Could we get a second so there could be a discussion? A second would just let us discuss it. It doesn't. Right. Can I do? Okay. I will second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Tough to say.
Mr. Payne, could you raise your question? If it's now open after you guys are the public to lodge the comments, it is actually open to the floor, so that would be no. Well, when we did it for you, we, uh, at your request, actually, I remember, we only allowed Ward 5 residents to comment on Ward 5. That, yes, but there's already been a question that said if someone out of the attack. Well, I didn't realize say, <laughs> that that was going to happen, and I'm, I'm going to, no, we're not going to get into a debate about this. This is a council decision. I'm actually staying out of the debate myself. I would like the council to make a decision, but I would like them to make it fairly fast. You, want you need to, to speak into the microphone, Sydney. Do you want to just vote on my motion? Yeah. All right. All in favor of postponing to the next meeting? No, you cannot vote. Opposed? We will vote tonight. Thank you. Okay. I am. Want to just pass them down, or would you like me to collect them? One vote for Phil Bofia. Two votes for Phil Bofia. <clears throat> One vote for John Robertson. One vote for Brad Hollowell. And three votes for Phil Bofia. So three votes would be a majority. Congratulations, Phil Bofia. If you'd like, uh, you could make a motion to amend the resolution to insert Bill, Phil Bofia's name, and then I'd be happy to join Phil at the podium to do an oath of office. Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Come on down. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state Aye. your name. Philip Chicane Bofia. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. The duties incumbent upon me. The duties incumbent upon me. As a city councilor. As a city councilor. For the city of Waterville. For the city of Waterville. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you Next up is community notes. Community notes is a time where if anybody has something to say or speak about that was not on the agenda tonight, now would be the time to do it. We just ask that you come state your name and tell us where you live and what you have to say. Good evening, my name's uh, Scott Mack. I live in uh, Ward 7, but I'm actually here on behalf of the Sense Main 4th of July. Let you guys know, save the date on August, uh, August, uh, April 27th, excuse me, save the date April 27th, 8 p.m. at the Winslow VFW. Get your leg warmers and big hair ready because the Central Main 4th of July is hosting a Back to the 80s dance and silent auction. Uh, music is going to be provided by DJ Mike Davis of uh, Mike Davis Entertainment. This year we're actually going to have something new. We usually give out door prizes. Well, this year we're doing 80s door prize trivia. So come test your knowledge in music, uh, everything to do with the 80s music. Not, uh, Music, movies, TV, and news for a chance to win a gift card provided by some very great uh, local businesses. Also, again, we will have 
uh, silent auction items donated by uh, local business as well. And unfortunately, this is a 21 plus uh, event. And the cost is uh, $10 a person and all the proceeds raised uh, that night from the ticket sales and the silent auction go directly to help keep all the 4th of July events uh, free for all the public to enjoy. Again, April 27th, 8 p.m. at the Winslow VFW. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Julian Payne, Ward 5. I'd just like to say I was very impressed that uh, Margaret Smith recused herself tonight. It's nice to see the council taking conflict seriously. I know there's uh, a lot of debate on conflict, whether it's you own 10% in stocks or how that goes, but the MEA guidelines state clearly if the public believe there's conflict, then to maintain the body of a whole, you, you maintain that integrity. And I was really surprised. It's not something we saw last year often. So we obviously Dr. Tate did with Colby and other people, but I think it sets a good standard for the community. And I know there was a confuffle online with ward system, but I think <laughs> when you see five <laughs> candidates come forward from one ward, all very qualified, ready to serve, that is a prime example of why the ward system should be protected. These people live in their community, they know the concerns, their neighbors are next door to them, the demographics are very different. I don't believe there's a shortage of people to apply, and I don't think there's a councillor that would be sitting on that seat today without a ward system. And I think it's, I think it's the uh, tremendous thing. Small town democracy on a street level is, is really where it's at. I mean, even me, I, I get kissed in my ward by old ladies, and <laughs> there's not another ward anyone's gonna kiss me walking down Hannaford. So, you know, it, it's a great system, and I think when we see five candidates coming forward, this is a great argument to preserve what Waterville has and what's always worked. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Anybody else for community notes? Michael, manager's report. Oh, manager's nope, report. I see Mrs. Weeks coming up. We're gonna squeeze her in. Come on up. Hmm. Just two things. First, congratulations, Phil. Uh, I just am echoing what Mr. Payne just said. I'm not sure who thought up the... Um, this is Kathy Weeks, Ward 1 by... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right, I'm, I'm, here to, I'm here to assist. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure who thought up the idea of eliminating wards, but tonight it proved again, five people very well qualified people to do it. So hopefully that idea will be dissolved and just put away. The other thing, because I still have residents come to me in Ward 1, I'm working with Mr. Morse and, and we have a good relationship, don't we, Mike? We do. Uh, but I still have residents coming asking what has been put in place so we will not have a ni another 90% building discount permit ever happen again. So again, residents are, this has not gone under the carpet. Residents are very concerned about their tax money. So thank you so much. All right, I guess now we'll move to manager's report, Mike. I have four items and they'll be quick. The most important one I think is tomorrow night meeting right here in this room is a session on the um, design of Castangway Square, future look of Castangway Square. So, so uh, starting at 5.30 tomorrow night, actually there is five o'clock, our light refreshments at 5.30 starts the process. I think this is the fourth meeting on the design of Castangway Square. So please feel free to come and put your two cents worth. It's free food. <laughs> two other um, important meetings. The parking committee meets this Thursday. Um, and the TIF advisory committee meets next week. So those, for those of you that are on one of those, one of those two committees. And uh, I passed out a copy of where our current committees stand with council members. Of course, I can't find it right now, but you all have a copy of it. Still need one or two volunteers um, for capital improvement. I know it's one of them. But thank you for those of you that have uh, stepped forward to say I'll take part. The committee work is very important in helping us get to things because when those items come up before the council, at least one or two or three of you are quite familiar with what that topic might be. 
My last item is about street lights. Probably you've read other communities are looking very seriously at replacing their street lights with a much more energy efficient version and uh, that's something we're diving right into. You'll hear a lot more about it. We're just trying to get all the groundwork and data collection together to bring it to the council to decide if you want us to move forward. Um, but I, it's at this point almost a no-brainer to look at the replacement of street lights with the more energy efficient ones that are out there. There is a capital cost up front that we have to deal with, but other communities have found ways creatively to do it. I think we really need to look at that. So more on street lights. My last item is to request the council go into an executive session um, according to Title I, Section 405, uh, C, six, C, C, Patty will remind me, to talk about a real estate um, item. So moved. And second. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. So